Our scripture reading uh, this morning is from 1 Samuel 17, verses 32 to 49. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. You are only a boy and he has been a fighting man from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream and put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag and with his sling in his hand approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine with his shield bearer in front of him kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I of a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and, and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone, the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So in our scripture for today, we find the story of David and Goliath. Now, most of us are familiar with this story. Uh, this is one of those stories that has crossed over from being a Bible story to really being known at, by a story that's known by society as a whole. Now, when we hear stories such as this one, the ones that we've heard many times over and over again, we tend to allow it to lose some of the impact compared to the first time that we hear the story. However, it is my hope today that you will begin to think about this story in a different way, or at the very least that we will gain some new insight into the story in David and Goliath. So the first thing I wanna talk about today and point out is this. You see, I think one of the greatest parts of this story can be found in verse 48. Starting about halfway through, it says, David ran quickly toward the battle to line to meet the Philistine. Now, it's amazing enough that this shepherd boy was willing to go and fight this massive giant, this battle-hardened soldier. 
and he is willing to face him when all the other soldiers of the Israelite army had turned and cowered away when Goliath offered up his challenge. You see, the greatest weapon that Goliath had was not his size or any of the weapons that he carried. It was the fear that he inspired in others. However, this small boy, who wasn't even strong enough to bear wearing the armor of the king into battle when fighting, he was not only willing to fight Goliath, he was going to charge right at him. Don't you think it would have made more sense for him to try and dodge and move out of the way of Goliath? Don't you think it would have been a smarter course of action for him to stay out of Goliath's range and to simply pelt him with rocks? Well, that didn't apply to David. You see, it didn't apply to David because he was so confident in God and he had armored himself with the armor of God. He knew that God was going to carry him through this battle and there was no fear in him because of this and because there was no fear in David, the greatest weapon that Goliath had was useless. Now, I want you to think about your own life. What is your Goliath? We all have a Goliath in our lives. Sometimes we have what feels like a bunch of them at once. When was the last time that you ran straight at your Goliath? I know for me, I struggle with this myself whenever I'm faced with a challenge. I'm the sort of person that needs to sit back and look at it in depth before deciding on my course of action. And I would love to tell you that I am the modern David that runs straight at the problem with all the faith that is needed to face it, but that would be misleading at best. Now I know that God will be with me through anything, and I know that he is always walking beside me through the good and bad. However, the very human part of me wants to rely on myself. Perhaps you have found this in your own walk. We constantly want to try and take on everything on our own. Heaven forbid we show any sign of needing help. Heaven forbid that we admit that we can't accomplish something on our own or overcome that Goliath on our own. What a hit to our pride if we show that we are relying on others, even on God. So it is often hard for us to admit to others, ourselves, or even to God that we are afraid of something. But the truth is that God wants us to bring these things to him. He wants us to rely on him. You see, he is a good, good father. He wants to hear our problems and he wants to help us defeat the Goliaths that are standing in front of us. Not only does he want us to defeat them, he wants to give us the confidence to charge directly at them. He wants to take away our fears so that we can overcome those challenges. So I continue to work on this myself and I continue to work and pray that I am able to grow my faith so that I charge directly at those problems. Knowing that I do not do so alone, but with the confidence of knowing that God goes with me. The second thing I want to talk about today relating to the story of David and Goliath is this. It's simply this thought. No one roots for Goliath. Well, okay, maybe only a Philistine roots for Goliath. So whenever you're facing something huge in your life, know that no one is rooting for that thing. Nobody wants Goliath to overcome you, especially God. See, he is rooting for you to overcome whatever it is that you in your life that is looming large. And you need to know that God is rooting for you to defeat it, but also your brothers and sisters in Christ are rooting for you to defeat it. How do I know this? Well, I want to tell you about when I had a Goliath in front of me and how it was overcome through faith and through the love of my brothers and sisters in Christ. By far, one of the hardest things that I have ever had to do or been a part of in my life was the process of adopting Lillian. <laughs> yep, you. 
It seemed like at every turn there was something that went wrong. And it seemed as if we would never be able to raise the money that was needed to bring her home. Every time we turned in paperwork, there was some sort of minor error and it was sent back by either the Chinese government or the United States government. And they asked for the paperwork to be done again. And also, hey, don't forget the additional fee for sending the paperwork back. There were times when I thought that this would never happen. And there were times when I was so frustrated that I wanted to give up. I would think, how can we ever overcome all of this? And then, we were gifted with another child that would come just before leaving to get Lillian. Now the thoughts loomed, how are we ever going to be able to raise four children? How are we ever going to be able to deal with a newborn and a newly adopted child? Oh yeah, and there's still two other kids that still need a mommy and daddy to be with them as well. Then right before we were about to leave, we get word that something is wrong again with our paperwork. And I mean right before we were about to leave. And unless we got it fixed within two days, we were not going to be able to go. And it really seemed like Goliath was gonna win this battle. But then God is faithful and he removes Goliath in our lives. A social worker from Harrisburg agreed to work on a long weekend day off when she did not have to, to redo the paperwork and get it in on time. And our brothers and sisters in Christ helped donate money to help us pay the cost to bring her home. And when we didn't know what we were gonna do with our children while we were gone, our parents came and agreed to watch the other children for the two weeks while we were traveling to bring Lillian home. You see, God stands beside us through all of this. And now we have this giant, crazy, loving and wonderful family. You see, God wants us to beat our Goliaths. And if we rely upon him, he will be there to help us defeat those Goliaths. So what is the Goliath that you are facing in your life today? Have you thought about running straight at it instead of dancing around it? You see, God wants you to call upon him so that he can armor you, to armor you with his confidence and his love so that you can face your Goliath without any fear. So my challenges for you this week are these. What is the Goliath that you're facing today? Are you willing to run at it knowing that God is on your side? And always remember that God wants to be there for you through this fight against Goliath. And so do your brothers and sisters in Christ.